Hey everybody, it's that time again. So, throw a couple of snags on the barbie, grab yourself a cold snack, and get ready for Hydraulic Horrors Part 4, The Fixening. So, before we get started, I just want to quickly go over the tools that you'll need if you want to attempt this job yourself. First, set of Imperial ring and open-ended spanners. Second, a set of Imperial Allen keys. Some Imperial feeler gauges. A small steel rule. This thing, which I will put details... Well, actually the remains of what I've got set out here are um, special tools which are designed for this job. I will put details of them in the description and where you can get them. Um, VL Churchill are in the process of remanufacturing a lot of them. So this we have for setting draft control and position control. This is for adjusting the main draft control spring. That is for setting the clearance on the draft control rod. That is for setting the maximum travel of the um, lift ram arm. And finally, this thing is called a dash pot wedge. And uh, we'll see that in use in a minute. Before we get started, uh, a couple of things I want to make clear. This is a Mark I hydraulic lift cover. The Mark III is different and has some slightly different tools and techniques. I'm not covering the Mark III, I'm only covering the Mark I. The second point is that I'm going to show the techniques. I'm not going to give measurements. The reason for this is because I do not want to be held responsible for anybody breaking their top cover. And believe me, you can do an awful lot of damage if you get this wrong. So if you do want to do this, if you feel confident to do this, if you've uh, done it before and you have access to the necessary tools to do it, then you need a good manual which will give you the correct measurements for your top cover. If you don't feel confident or comfortable doing this, you don't know what you're doing, you don't know what's going on here, then please don't do it because it can make it, it can ruin your day. Okay, so we're starting with draft control. And if you've got pressure control fitted, and if I'm having to show you this, you nearly, really need to be think twice about whether you're doing this job. This linkage here, and this, that, and the diaphragm there, that's pressure control. So the first thing you need to do to adjust draft control is put the draft control quadrant in the lowest position that it will go into. So that's right down, draft control. You need to take out that split pin and slide that pin that the slip pin goes through back so that it's free of this lever here. Okay, once you've got that off, you should be able to, by compressing the spring in the draft control adjuster here, in the pressure control adjuster here, sorry, you should be able to slide that out of the way and it'll come up, that part will come off Inside there's a big spring, you need to just take the whole lot out of the way and that will give you access to that little fella in there, which is part of what you need to do next. So you will put the position control into the transport position 
and again if you've got pressure control fitted there's a lump there it should say pressure position control stamped where my finger is so you put the lever there you put the draft control lever in the, between the two quadrant marks and it will appear somewhere around there you stick the dash pot wedge this little curly chap here into the dash pot plunger to lock the dash pot plunger as far out that way as it will go so that dash pot plunger cannot go in it is as far as it it's at the limit of its travel in that direction next it's difficult to see now but the adjusting screw there loosen that lock nut and screw that with an allen screw allen key screw that out then you need to put the weight frame tool in place suspend three pounds on the end and connect it as high up as you can on to the lever there. Once you've got the dash pot plunger lock wedge in place, you've got your weight frame, you've got your weights on, put the position control quadrant into um, transport position to give it its maximum height and put the draft control quadrant in between the quadrant marks there which is, should be just in front of the position control then you can undo that lock nut make your adjustment on that fulcrum position bolt and set the gap there between the lever and the tip of the dash pot so that little gap in there set that correctly according to your manual once you've done that tighten the lock nut there check it again there make sure it's still correct if it's not go back and adjust and keep on until you have that where you want it according to the manual that you're using so to adjust position control first put draft control in the fully raised position leave position control in the transport position put your dash pot wedge in your weight frame and your weights but also now you need to install this which governs the maximum it's the the limit of travel of the lift ram that is extremely important in fact of all of this job that I've been looking at now um, the one tool that you can that there is no alternative to using is this if you allow the ram to travel a millimeter or a few thousandths further than it should you will break your top cover, you'll break your center housing in the middle um, of your axle and it will, honestly, it will ruin your day, it will cost you a lot of money and you'll blame everybody except yourself because there's always somebody down the pub who says, oh, I can do that, you don't need that tool. Well, you do. If you don't want to have a very, very expensive mistake, don't try and do it without this thing here. Okay, so once we've got that in place, we've got all the other, we've got the, the load on the control lever, we've got the dash pot wedge. Now we're going to adjust, slacken off that lock, lock nut again, adjust that screw until up here, again, we have the correct setting 
between the tip of the dash pop plunger and the lever. Once you've got the correct setting, which you will get from your manual, you can go back down here, tighten that lock nut, check again, and make sure everything is correct. And if it's not, just repeat until you get that right. To adjust the draft control rod, which is the final adjustment we're going to make, we'll remove the block there, we'll remove the weight frame, remove the dash pot wedge, make sure the lock nuts, lock nuts are, tight, are tight from your previous adjustments, and move the quadrant for draft control as far back as it will go. So that's the maximum raised position. As you're moving the quadrant, you can see the draft control rod moving in and out. That rod, that rusty looking rod there that's going in through the casting, that transfers movement from the top link via the spring that's inside that housing to this rod, which then, as it moves, makes adjustments to um, the draft control as, as the load changes and as you're in work. So we need to make sure that that is set correctly. First, we need to make sure that this spring is set correctly. This one isn't, this one is full of rust, but if you've replaced that or taken it out and serviced it, got a new nut on there, um, you need to, first of all, slacken off and remove the Allen screw that's in that hole. Now that behind that, there may be a nylon or a lead ball, which is used to lock this nut here without damaging the thread. To slacken that off, you can adjust that with the correct tool for doing so. Um, and you know when you've got that correct because there is no end play in either direction from the control rod here. If you get it, to, if that's in too tight, you'll have end play. If it's in too loose, you'll have end play. If you get just the right sweet spot, there should be no movement, end-to-end -end movement in that at all. Once you've got that, put that back in. Put your lead ball or your fishing weight or whatever you want to use, that back in, tighten it up to stop that nut there from walking out. Once that in place, draft control lever fully raised and using this tool you can set the clearance between the casting and the imaginary bolt head which would be in there. According to your manual um, it should be just snug between there, just to feel a little bit of resistance, um, and then that should be correctly set. So finally, we want to look at adjusting pressure control. Now, if you remember, we took this lever out, we, un we removed that split pin, pushed that pin back a bit, took this lever out, and the pressure control adjuster dropped all of that out so we could get in to that adjuster there. Well now we need to put that back. It's fiddly but it, you can do it and you will need to put the pressure control lever as far forward as it will go. So to adjust the pressure control you need to press that lever down remove any end float and you with your steel rule between the bottom of the valve at the, the top of the valve body and the bottom of the adjuster you need to rotate that which is on a screw thread until you get to the desired measurement there. There is a little spring lock which 
holds pressure control in place and stops that from moving around while the machine is in use. Okay, I think that covers the static setup of a, uh, a top cover. So, based on the assumption that you've put it together properly, that you are using a Mark I, you do have the correct tools, and you've got a manual which shows you the measurements that you need to set, you should be able to, to do this. However, it is very, very, I can't stress how easy it is. If you're not familiar, if you don't really know what you're doing, it is very easy to get this wrong, and it's very easy to end up turning your beloved classic tractor into a lot of very expensive scrap. Anyway, enough of that. So, if you've made it this far, thank you very much for watching. Um, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.